drugs course. In this lecture, we'll analyze the motion of the electron current in a charged particle, but now under a uniform magnetic field. In all the lecture we've taken before, the motion was under uniform electric field. Okay. If we have a charged particle, whether it's electron, negative electron, or positively charged proton, and enter a region of a magnetic field B, vector B. This magnetic field will exert a force, a magnetic force, when this, when this is charged particle. <clears throat> this magnetic force can be calculated using this law Q V cross B, the cross product of the velocity of the, of the particle, the charged particle, and the magnetic field vector. To determine the direction of this magnetic force, we will apply the right-hand rule. Simply, for example, in this, uh, in this case, the velocity vector is in the direction of x, this direction, and the magnetic vector is perpendicular to the whiteboard and it is into the whiteboard in this direction. So the velocity in this direction and V in this and B in this direction. So according to this rule, we will move our hand from V to B, V in this direction, and V in this direction. So we will move from V to B. The direction of this thumb is, is the direction of the force. But it can be in the same direction of the sun or in opposite direction of the sun according to the charge of the particle itself for example in this case the charge is negative so moving from V to B this is the direction of the sun so the magnetic force will be the opposite of this direction so it will be in this direction downward opposite to the direction of the sun so in this case, the electron, if there is no electric field, was moving in this direction, x direction, the magnetic force wants this electron to take it down in y direction or negative y direction. Instead of going in x direction only or y direction only, the electron will move in between. And exactly when a circular does. This was, as you see here, at any point, it has two components, a component in X and another component in negative Y. Let's take another example, a positive proton, a positive charge, the same region of this magnetic field, and also it is perpendicular to the whiteboard and it is into the whiteboard to determine the uh, the, the direction of the magnetic force will move from V to B. This is the direction of the thumb in A. This is the positive charge, so this is the direction of the force. So we have a force here in the direction of Y, positive Y, in the top direction. This proton wants, without electric magnetic field, it wants to continue moving in a straight line in the direction of X. This force wants to take this proton toward most of y direction, instead it will move in between. At any point here, the velocity has two components, one x vx and one y v1. Another property for this force, the magnetic force, is that it, it is not changing or it does not change the speed of the particle. I mean, at any point here, the speed is constant. The same speed this, this, bark, this particle uh, enters the region of the, of the magnetic field. So, if at this point the velocity was V, at any point here the velocity will continue with its same value V. The same here for the electron. If at this point the velocity was V, it will continue with this bus at the same velocity V. Okay. Let's draw now the complete course or trajectory of this electron or both of the charged particle. Let's say like this. At this point, all the velocity in the, in the direction of x. After a quarter of a period, the velocity will be in the direction of negative one. So it has only one component in one direction. After half a period, the direction will be in minus x 
direction, so it has the most has one component in x direction. After three quarters of a period, the velocity will be in y direction. So there is one component for the velocity in the direction of y. After one complete period of cycle, we will return the, the same starting point where the velocity has one uh, component in the, in the direction of x. At any point in between, v has two components. So v will be equal to the square root of v x squared plus v y squared. The same here and, and so on. Now let's determine the radius r and the, b, the time period or a cyclic, cyclic period of this electron or a charge particle, positive charge particle, proton. Okay. This is a cross product, so it can be represented as a magnitude using this equation. Where theta here is the, is the, is, is the angle between the velocity vector and the magnetic field vector. At this point, for example, point number one, this theta is equal to 90 degree. The velocity is in v direction, the uh, b is into the whiteboard. So the theta is uh, 90 degree. Sine 90 degree is equal to 1, so the velocity is, uh, the force is equal to QVB. And this force is equal to the derivative force in v square over r. Equating these two terms, so r equal to m v over q v. So this is the radius of this circle. The time period is the time taken by the charged particle to make a complete, uh, complete circumference or complete cycle around this circle. Any Time is equal to the distance traveled by the particle over the speed of this particle along its, its journey from the starting point to the end point. So, this is the, this is the distance traveled by the charged particle uh, around this circumference. This distance is the circumference of this circle, which is 2 by r. And the velocity of the particle along its journey from here to the same point is constant equal to v r is equal to mv over qb substituting by r here v will, go, will cancel v so t equal to 2 by m over qb in the, lecture, in the next lecture we will prove the following first we will prove by mathematics that this motion is exactly circular motion. The trajectory of the electron will be circle, exactly a circle. We'll prove also that this circle has radius equal to mv over qb, and we'll prove that the time, the periodic uh, time is equal to 2 by m over qb. 